Hello there, thanks for watching and I appreciate you. This is a video in a series of videos showing you how to make a custom character controller that uses rigid body physics, sim machine cameras, Unity's new input system, and custom player gravity. In the last video we gave our player the ability to jump. This jump ability included features such as variable jump height, coyote time, and jump buffering. We also fixed a bug with our slope handling, I showed you how to set a limit on how steep of a slope our player can stand on and still be able to jump, and we added a movement modifier to make our player move faster or slower when in the air or not grounded. In this video, we're going to have some fun with physics by implementing a function that when we jump off an object, it will effectively kick it out from under us. So let's not waste any more time and jump right on in. As usual, this project that I'm starting with is the exact same project that I left off with in the last video. So if you're following along, everything will be exactly the same because all the changes I make to this project, I record and I upload. In fact, there's still one annoying little thing I want to fix real quick. My gamepad controller still has some drift in its analog sticks, so I'd like to increase its dead zone real quick. So to change that, we're going to go down to our project panel. Under input, we already have our input system .input settings. If you don't already know, you can also get to this from edit, project settings. But in here, we can just select this, open input settings window over our inspector panel, click that. And here we have our default dead zone min and max. We're just going to increase our minimum to 0.3 should be enough. And that's it. That'll automatically save and we can just close it. Next, we can get right down to business and in our project panel down the bottom left corner, we can go to scripts, controllers, and we want to edit our humanoid land controller script. So we'll double click on that. In our editor here, as usual, I'm just going to go ahead and add the code and we will come back and we will review it line by line. Okay, and that's it already for the code. So this is a simple implementation. We're going to make this a little bit more complicated here in a second. But let's go over this real quick if we scroll up to the top. So all we added here was a header called Just for Fun that's going to show in our inspector panel. And we have a serialized field. It's a float. We're calling it Jump Reaction Force. And we set the value to 2000. Now we'll scroll down to our player jump function. In our player jump function, in our if statement, let's check and see if the player is going to jump or not. Along with our jump code, we added this kick stuff out from under function. And if we go down to our kick stuff out from under function, you'll see that all this is is a if check. We're checking to see if our ground check hit dot collider is a value or not. And our ground check hit collider also has a attached rigid body. If it does, then we're creating a vector three called force. We are calculating the force that we want to apply to the rigid body. And then we are applying the calculated force to the rigid body. It's pretty simple, I just skimmed over that, but we're going to come back and we'll look at this a lot closer in just a second. Because first I want to do a playtest and then I can show you some of the issues that we're going to have with this code. And we'll come back and we'll make this more complicated. Okay, here we are in the game now. Let's go ahead and knock these over real quick. And if I'm standing on one of these cubes and I move in any direction and I jump, it's just going to send it in the opposite direction. It's working as intended, but you'll see that the cube itself is moving very, very slowly. We can just send all of these, it doesn't really matter, it's kind of a slow-mo effect. But anyway, that's because our drag is so high, so we gotta look at that. And the other issue is that if we're standing on one of these and we go off the edge and we jump using our coyote time, we technically don't have a collider below us, so the cube's not gonna do anything. So you can see that cube did nothing, because I actually jumped when I was off of it because of the coyote time. And once more, so we need to fix that as well. I mean, technically we don't need to, but I would like to fix that. So let's go ahead and let's look at fixing these issues. I think we're going to start with the physics, and then we'll go modify the code again. Back in Unity, let's start with making a physic material. So in our project panel, physic materials, I'm going to right click, create, physic material, and I'm going to call it stacked blocks. In the top right, in the inspector panel, we're going to change the dynamic and static frictions to both 0 0.2. And then in our hierarchy panel, we're going to select all of our stacked cubes. Then I'm simply going to grab our stacked blocks physics material from our project panel and drag and drop it onto our material for our box collider. While we're here and we have all of our cubes selected, I'm going to change our mass to 30. 
and our drag and angular drag to 0 0.5. Just one more thing to do. We're going to increase Unity's built-in default gravity value. So if we go up to the top here, edit, project settings, under physics, and gravity, we're going to change the y to negative 19.62. We're just going to double the value. Go ahead and close the project settings window. Now I'm going to take the cubes that we already have and I'm going to duplicate them. I'm probably going to change their mass and their size as well, but I'm just going to make stacks of cubes for us to have some fun with. And I'll review all that as soon as we're done. Okay, to review, as you can see, we made several new stacks of blocks. The big blocks have a scale of 2, so it's a 2 meter cube, and a mass of 30, and the drag and angular drag are both 0 0.5. Also, it's using Unity's default gravity. Same thing with the small cube, they're very, very similar. The only thing that's different is they have a scale of 1, so it's a 1 meter cube, and we just set the mass to 1 kilogram. Just as a side note, in case you have not been following along this series, even though we increased Unity's default gravity value to 19.62, this will not affect our player's gravity because we are using our own custom gravity for our player. And with that, let's go ahead and do a play test and see if we're now happy with our physics interactions. Let's just bump into some cubes first real quick. Yeah, that feels a lot better. The cubes are heavy. The more cubes there are, they're not too heavy though. Let's send one off the edge. Gravity looks okay. It's definitely a lot better. Probably good enough for now. Let's send this one. Right into that. Yeah, that looks better. Let's do that a bunch of times. So one other thing we need to address yet is these little cubes. Since they only weigh one kilogram, if we use the same amount of force, I don't know if you saw that, if we use the same amount of force on these, <laughs> we basically send them into orbit. So we need to do something about that. If you look real close, you'll see them flying about. But literally, we're just sending them in orbit. So let's jump back to our code, and we'll take a look at improving our code. Back in our humanoid land controller script now, we're going to handle those two things I just pointed out. The main one being that if we use our coyote time to jump off an object that should kick out from under us, it does not kick out from under us currently. So the simplest thing we can do is cache or just remember the last thing that we were on before our coyote time timer started counting, and then we just apply the force to that. So with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to change the code to take that account, and then we'll review it real quick, and then we'll test it again. Let's review everything we're doing now. We renamed our jump reaction force variable to jump reaction force multiplier, and we changed its value to 0 0.75. We created a raycast hit called last ground check hit, and we created a vector 3 called player move input at last ground check hit. In our fix update loop, we added our player info capture function in between our player run and our player fault gravity because we want to grab our movement input in between these before we modify with either our player fall gravity or our player jump functions. It is important that this function falls right here and in the player info capture function we're checking to see if our ground check hit is hitting a collider. We need to make sure we're doing that because it may not always be hitting a collider. If it is then we are taking our ground check hit and we're storing it in our last ground check hit variable as well as our player move input. We're storing that in our player move input at last ground check hit variable. And finally down in our kick stuff out from under function. We're checking to see if our last ground check hit that collider. We're checking to see if it has an attached rigid body because even though it has a collider it does not mean it has a rigid body. So if it does have a rigid body we're going to calculate the force we're going to apply by creating a vector 3 called force and it's going to equal the result of Unity's built-in transform direction function of our player move input at last ground check hit times our last ground check hit dot collider dot attach rigid by dot mass times our jump reaction force multiplier. 
Now I realize that's a lot, but it's actually very simple. If you're not familiar with what exactly the transform direction function does, I suggest you go back and watch the slope video that we did earlier in this series. I break it down pretty much as simply as I can and I try to explain it. But basically what we're doing is we're converting our player move input at last ground check hit from local space to world space so that we have a universal coordinate system which we can use to apply the force universally to the object that we're affecting, which in this case is the cubes. And in this total force calculation, remember we were sending the little cubes out in the orbit because they had such a small mass value to them. Well, now we're taking our mass value of that rigid body into consideration and we're multiplying it by a much smaller jump reaction force multiplier variable. And finally, we're taking the rigid body of the collider that we stored in our last ground check hit and we're adding a force at position. That's another improvement we did. We recorded the position we were at when we were last on the rigid body, and now we can use that position to make it a little more realistic. So we're taking a negative force because we want the opposite reaction of the way we're going because we're kicking out from under us. So we're taking the negative force that we calculated and we're applying it at our last ground check hit that point, which is exactly the point where we we're on the object last. And instead of using force mode.force, we're now going to use force mode.impulse, which you would generally use for like an explosion or more of an instant force. One thing to note is that add force and add force at position both use world space coordinates to apply a force to the object, which is why we use transform direction to convert our player move input from local space to world space because now we can use that world space coordinate to apply the force to the affected rigid body. And that's pretty much it for the code summary. I hope you have fun with this. Let's go ahead and let's do a play test now. So here we are standing on a cube now, and if we walk off the edge of the cube and jump during our coyote time, the cube will still go flying out from under us because we just fixed that. As you can see, it works great. And also now if I jump on a little cube, you'll see that we are no longer sending them in the orbit. Instead, they go a reasonable amount. So that's also fixed. Of course, if there's not enough force for you, you can always turn up the multiplier so that these go faster and have more impact. You can have a lot more fun that way. Things go flying a lot more. But yeah, I think that wraps it up for this video. That's it for this video. I realize this video was a bit outside the scope of just a character controller, but it's pretty fun to just kick things around and gives a little bit more of a feeling of immersion. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. In the next video, I haven't yet had the chance to decide what topic we're going to cover. All we really have left, the core things I'd like to introduce, are crouching, moving and rotating platforms, and stairs. Let me know in the comments below which you'd like to see next. I'm looking forward to putting together next video, and until then, see ya. If you're feeling generous, leave a comment down below. I want to read what you're thinking. Let me know if you have any questions or recommendations. I'd also appreciate it very much if you liked the video. And if you're feeling extra, extra generous, it'd blow my mind if you subscribe to the channel. Being new to this and putting these videos together takes a lot of time and effort. Thank you for any and all participation and support. I look forward to continuing this in the next one. See ya.